identity, cloud infrastructure security, CI, CV security, preventative security, and data security. These are the five skills you require for to become a great cloud hacker in 2023. This basically is the advice that I got from hackers who were attending DEF CON 31 earlier this year, which is the largest hacking conference in the world. They had about 22,750 hackers attending the conference, and this is what they have to say for the skills that you need to become an awesome cloud hacking person in 2023. Now, granted, we spoke to some blue teamers and we spoke to some red teamers, we spoke to some bench testers as well. So by the end of this video, you will at least have information about what areas should I focus specifically under these five topics so that either you can be a great person to identify what the holes are and hopefully you can use that to fill them up. And I do want to give a disclaimer. Any information shared over here is not to be used for unauthorized purposes. So with that said, and my ass saved, I want to talk about the first one, which is identity. Identity is basically the number one reason why people are finding that cloud breaches happen. Now, obviously number one is a bit of a stretch because there are other things, but in my mind, if you don't have username and password, you do not have access to the AWS account or Azure account or GCP account, or in fact, any other account. Identity is the reason why people are trying to fish you. People are trying to identify, how can I get access to the keys that Ashish has? According to some of the notes that I took at the red team, I spoke to a red teamer. And so we spoke about how do you red team a cloud environment? And they kind of divided the entire thing into two parts. The first one being more around the human focus, which is where the objective is, how do I get access to the password or credentials from a particular user? And the second was one was more around application. Now, the one specifically around the human, which calls out phishing, malicious browser extension, subdomain takeover, and some kind of a spear phishing campaign to identify the credentials of a user. Now we spoke about obviously how and what they're doing, but what about the complexity of it? Because I mean, you probably want to understand why has it become such a problem? Because isn't that just supposed to be username and password? It's worthwhile calling out how identity became probably the most important thing people look at when they're trying to perform cloud hacking. I think the problems that CISOs are facing are somewhat ubiquitous around identity. Mm. And this is proven out in a lot of the research papers we're seeing. All of them speak to the problems with identity and access management that are higher up the stack from yeah. the problems that we previously dealt with. So we think about zero trust, we think about identity in terms of device identity. We think of human identity as service identity. Yep. And then all of the secrets management for all of those different identity profiles yeah. matched up against the matrix of data and data sensitivity. And so all of us have those similar problem cases or similar challenges. Yep. And the opportunities are for us to look at being really thoughtful about the frameworks through which we provision identity, manage our data, and then have to think about the regulatory and compliance impact yeah. of those decisions. The whole concept of privilege of sensitive assets, companies are realizing it's not a binary. The whole concept of privileged access is not a binary yes or no. It's not privileged or not privileged. It's a spectrum. There are things that are more sensitive. There are things that are less sensitive. And so how do you manage that over time? I think is that's where permission management programs start to evolve, right? Mm. As you start with this just-in-time approach around sensitive resources, that's a low hanging fruit. Based on that information, we understand that identity is quite complex. Now you just have human users, non-human users, third party users, and probably some other kind of users. In the mix of all of that, you also have privileged users that you have to look at, which may be privileged on premise, but may not be privileged on cloud, or may just be privileged users in the cloud environment and not in the on-premise environment. So there's a lot more complexity, and it is not a binary that you're looking at for doing an identity access management. So this is probably a great skill to acquire if you're leveling up your cloud hacking skills in 2023, and also using that skill to protect your organization. Now that we have spoken about identity security, the second skill that would be really valuable for you in 2023 would be to learn and understand data security, how that works in cloud. Now, specifically talking about data security, it's worthwhile noting that data is what makes a company make money. It's what makes companies be trusted by their customers. We provide our information to Gmail and all these other companies because we trust them with our data. Now, if they can't protect it or if they can't classify it the right way, that definitely would worry us. So as a cloud hacking person who's uplifting your skill set on how can a malicious actor attack your cloud environment, they will try and identify what are some of the publicly open resources that you may have from something like shorten.com, Shodan.com, Shodan.io. They might use public resources like Shodan.io to identify what are some of your resources in the cloud environment that are open to the internet. And they may use that information to probably take out information that you have accidentally left open on the internet. But I must also call out that similar to identity, data security has changed quite a bit. Now, data security in cloud, it looks very different. So if we look at the old world, yeah. in the old world, the king of data security was DLP, data yeah. loss prevention. Oh, yes. And DLP was all about 
let's keep the data, the sensitive data within our four walls. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't have four walls anymore. No. We don't have a perimeter anymore. Yeah. We have a presence in AWS. We have a presence in Azure. We have a presence in GCP. The data scientists want to use Snowflake. Office 365 is full of data and permissions. Nobody can get their hands and feet around. That's the new reality. So keeping the data in is not enough. No. You have to know what data really makes the difference. You have to be able to classify, to contextualize the data, to understand what its value to your business is. Yeah. And only through that are you actually able to put the appropriate controls, policies, guardrails around it. So data itself has evolved quite a bit. And nowadays with cloud, we are also talking about data that could be sprawled across a wide public cloud environment. So number one thing, if you are looking at following the data problem as well yourself and you're a blue teamer, you've understood how red teamers and others who attack your cloud environment resources. The one thing you want to do as a blue teamer is to identify where the data discovery needs to be conducted what kind of data that you have sprawled across on a public cloud environment, how can you identify and classify them? And the next thing you do is how do I do some kind of a data leakage prevention or some kind of a DSPM, data security posture manager, whatever the right next step needs to be for the kind of data that you're dealing with, which is either potentially needs to be on the internet, hopefully it doesn't need to be on the internet, but at least if there needs to be on the internet or in a protected area, you know exactly the kind of data that is there, who has access to it, and why is it there in the first place. So that is why data security skills are important for a cloud hacker, because you get to see the yin and the yang. Now that brings me to the third point about cloud infrastructure pen testing. Now, traditionally people have spoken about cloud pen test as, hey, this is just looking at configuration management, right? Why is that a problem? I beg to differ, it has changed quite a bit. Most applications these days are hosted on a cloud environment, so if you are a pen tester or if you are a red teamer you also have to understand the context of having something like a cloud infrastructure be tested as part of your testing exercise for example you may spend hours or days looking for a SQL injection when all the time the resource or the server that the application was hosted on was already facing the internet that could have turned your application into an automatic high risk which would have made your finding come up as a high risk and you should be able to at least close the report before spending days looking at SQL injection on the flip side if you find nothing on the configuration management side, you can still use the information from the application side to identify if there are any application vulnerabilities as well. But in point being that cloud pen testing has evolved quite a bit. It probably is the next evolution of network security. As infrastructure continues to grow and mature and move slowly into the cloud, we've seen a very slow shift. AWS is what? 12, 13 years old at this point? Something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. It really started picking up more adoption about 10 years ago. It's been a very slow roll, especially with kind of the larger companies that we work with where cloud's kind of scary and we've put a lot of money into a data center. Maybe we should just keep everything on-prem for the time being. <laughs> As that thought process has kind of gone away and more people have moved up to the cloud, we're kind of evolving our techniques and how we need to approach pen tests in those spaces. Now that you understand how cloud infrastructure pen testing has evolved, you probably also want to look at some of the blue team activity you could be doing. Like for example, if you're doing a pen test, make sure you call out that, hey, can we also do some kind of a configuration management or some kind of a configuration test of the infrastructure? Is there a business logic flaw that allows someone to access my server? Or is there another bigger flaw that the application is exposing my infrastructure too. So that should be another skill set you should work on in 2023 to become a great cloud hacker. Now, the last set that you probably want to think about is preventative cloud security. Don't be surprised by the name preventative security because all these hacks that we spoke about, which I'm pretty sure any malicious attacker on the internet would not want you to know, you probably also want to know how can you prevent them from coming in. So the last skill that would either prevent your cloud hacking or make it better for your organization is to understand preventative cloud security. Now, there are multiple ways to do this. You can use a data parameter. You can have controls that are already applied at an organization level or a top level in an AWS, Azure, or GCP context. So you are able to apply policies across the board, but prevention policy doesn't stop there. And what it's all about at the end of the day is trying to stop resource misconfigurations in cloud before they're deployed. And it encompasses different sets of capabilities around securing you know, cloud resources, securing cloud data, but the benefits of those end up being you're simplifying your compliance outcomes within cloud and also being able to move a lot faster when you're kind of taking care of these things preventively earlier on in the life cycle. So if we think about something like creating a virtual machine, let's use AWS as an example. So when I want to use run instances for EC2, what I am will do, which is the native authorization language within AWS, it'll allow me to do things like you have the permission to create an instance or you have the permission to delete an instance. 
What it doesn't do is tell me which subnet I'm allowed to deploy into, what security groups I can use. Is my machine encrypted? Is it facing the internet? All of these things are a level deeper than I am. And that's kind of where the cloud provider stops. So while there are 340 services in AWS and there's about 13,000 different IAM actions, yeah. there's actually closer to 140,000 parameters oh, that you may want to control when you're actually deploying out to cloud. Now that we understand the complexity of why primitive security is probably better than just working on security controls, it's worthwhile calling out that cloud is no longer a new term for a lot of people. A lot of people now understand cloud as hey, I know public cloud is not just public cloud, it's cloud, I, it could be any form, it could be private, it could be AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, Alibaba, IBM, and just the list keeps going on. This brings me to the last thing, that as cloud has evolved, we're also writing cloud as code, which is the last skill set you probably also want to be focusing on for 2023 to become a great cloud hacking person, which is CICD security. The reason I talk about this is because code to cloud and cloud to code is a term that is very common these days. Essentially, what people are trying to say is you're writing infrastructure as code to produce resources and infrastructure in the cloud. And the same way, anything that you do in the cloud should literally be translatable into a code. Because if you think about it this way, your application is hosted in the cloud, you're using infrastructure such as code to deploy the server on which the application would be hosted, which is running the code of the application that you're trying to show to the world. So it's like, if you were to think that this is a metaverse, oh, we finally use that word metaverse, but it's like a meta, meta, meta sort of situation where the entire chain is going to be a code chain. And talking about chain, this is where the CI/CD pipeline comes in. A CI/CD pipeline, for in case you don't know what that is, is basically what is driving the infrastructure creation using code, but in a systematic way through a imaginary pipeline. CI/CD security is really important because CI/CD is a great place if you are a cloud hacking person and you're trying to up that skill. The next place I would look at is I would look at things like, hmm, hmm. is there any access to production from CSCD? Is the CSCD interface itself does it have a login protection? Well, if you people remember Jenkins from back in the day, initial versions of Jenkins did not have a login page and many people had the console page of Jenkins on the internet. So if you have, if you get access to one of those Jenkins pages which does not have a login page, you probably are in luck and you can use that to access production, dev, test, any other environment as well. So CICD is a great resource if you are trying to look at ways of getting into different environments without having to directly attack a AWS account, Azure account, TCP account. So just because everything is core, why not just change the source itself? You can look at the CICD pipeline for what kind of permissions you have. Can you change things in the CICD to deploy infrastructure or maybe even create users for you so you can have more permit persistent users? This also leads me to the point where most people get confused where is it code to cloud or is it cloud to code? It really depends on where in the maturity curve your security organization sets. Like I think of if you started the cloud, which obviously you have to figure out because it's like the faucet in my kitchen sink is leaking, right? Mm. Now, one alternative for me is to go back and fix all the pipes and everything to make sure that it never happens again in any other faucet at all, or I can stop that leak first yep. and then go back and fix everything else, right? So if you have risks that you are obviously aware of in your cloud platform or yep. in your runtime rather, the obvious thing to do is, is manage that risk first and then put in controls and practices so that it doesn't happen again. So you start from a reactive way, assuming that you have security debt that you need to manage, yep, right? Yep, if yep. you don't have any security that you need to manage, then that's great, you know? You're living in a really, really nice, beautiful world. But if you have things and risks that you have to manage, you have to start from your runtime, figure out how to actually go back and fix it, who owns it, which risks need to be mitigated first, yeah. go back and fix those things. And then as you're doing it, you're putting controls in your build environment, dev environment, your you know, infrastructure as code environment so, so that they don't get reintroduced or other similar things don't get pushed into production. So if you're at team listening to this, you probably want to start the place. If you already are using infrastructure as code, probably that's the first place you want to look at doing some kind of static analysis for the infrastructure that you have itself. Are there any secrets stored there? Are there any resources being created that are not complying with the policy or any business logical flaw? So go back to the pen testing part, make sure you're getting your infrastructure as code tested as well. If you are also looking at this from another perspective, your CSPM or similar tools are also going to help you look at the infrastructure post posture. But some of the tools out there have started looking at CICD security as well. So you may think about going for an open source solution or a paid solution for CICD security or preventative security or data security or even identity security. The point being, 
These are the five skills that will really help you become a great cloud hacking person. Probably use that skill to protect the organization that you're working for as an internal penchester or red team or probably even a cloud security engineer or an architect. Hone these skills so that you're better prepared for what's coming next in cloud security. So did I cover every skill that you should have picked up for becoming a better cloud hacker in 2023? Or are there any skills that you think I should include in here? So drop that as a comment or share that with us and we would love to cover what other skills people require to become a great cloud hacking person or a great cloud security professional in 2023. If you enjoy content like this and are trying to learn more about cloud security, definitely consider subscribing and following our cloud security podcast. We talk to cloud security practitioners every week to bring you information about what's the latest in cloud security and how you can become a better cloud security professional yourself. That's pretty much for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Cloud infrastructure security. Wow, that is a mouthful. Cloud infrastructure penchester.